Good evening. So Pastor uh, Jimenez asked me to give a quick testimony, um, just a little bit of background. My name is Jared Pizarnski. Last year, I was a guest here, like many of you, in July of 2016, and by November 1st, 2016, I lived here. So I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to explain how that happened in five minutes or less, so uh, buckle your seatbelts. Um, a little bit of background just on myself. I was raised Lutheran. I was saved through Pastor Anderson's ministry a few years ago. Uh, someone in his church offended me, you know, thank God. Um, so I, I did what I was supposed to do. I, I took my family. We joined the closest uh, KJV church in uh, North Dakota that we could find. And, you know, it, I'm not going to get into it because it's typical of what I'm sure um, a lot of people outside of this movement have in their in their independent fundamental Baptist churches out there. So we were basically um, going to church twice a week, um, doing nothing for the Lord. It wasn't a soul winning church. Um, we were watching YouTube um, as much as we could. Um, on a worldly sense, I had a successful career. I had a great side business going. And as time went on, uh, the YouTube kind of kind of slowed down. You know, I got busier in my in my secular life. And, you know, things just slowed down as far as, you know, you, you don't like watching other people work for the Lord when you're not doing anything. Let's put it that way, okay? So we got re-engaged when we heard about what was going on at Verity in 2016. Um, I was personally angry about it, and we decided that, you know, we were going to come down for the preaching conference and show some support. So we packed with the family, flew down to the Red Hot Preaching Conference number one in uh, 2016. Uh, we got here. The first thing that I realized when we first got here was... I was not unique at all. I mean, from the perspective of, you know, I kind of had this idea, we're coming from North Dakota, people are going to be so surprised, you know. I mean, there was people from all over the world. The first guy, first guy I met was from New Zealand. I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even think that guy ever went home, you know. And so, you know, that was the first thing. You know, we weren't unique in that sense. The second thing was we weren't unique in the sense of our church story. I didn't even really talk to people about my church because I was sitting here listening to people and it was the same thing over and over and over again. So, you know, the first, it was funny because the first night, I shouldn't say this, but the first night we get back to the hotel, my wife and I get in an argument because I could see this sadness come over my wife's face that like we're going to be gone in three days, you know? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Can't you just enjoy your vacation? We can't move to California. Are you insane? You know? So that was the first night. The second night was uh, Pastor, I think it was the second or third night was Pastor Romero's sermon. And Pastor Romero's sermon was, uh, don't just stand there. Okay, I've not listened to it twice. Okay, I didn't go to YouTube and listen to it. Pastor Romero gave a testimony about how he moved his, his family from, Cal, uh, from Colorado. He gave up everything and, and went to Faithful Word for all the right reasons. He might as well have walked off the pulpit and punched me in the face. That, that's how I felt, seriously. And, you know, because in my life, I was sprinting in my secular life. And, but in my Christian life, I was standing still. And it really resonated with me. I'm, I'm getting choked up here about it. But anyway, I walked up to Pastor Romero after, after his sermon. And I don't know if you ever had one of these moments where you say something to somebody, and before you even get it out of your mouth, you realize how stupid it sounds. But I walked up to him because, I mean, I was really disturbed by the whole thing. And I walked up to him, and here this guy had just given this great sermon about how he put his words to action. And I went up to him, and I said something along the lines of, but what if you live on the family farm? I said to him. And I don't even remember if he responded to me. He just kind of looked at me like I had three heads. And, <laughs> and I just kind of walked away going, that was really stupid to say something whiny to a guy like that. But the bottom line is, by the time we flew home on Sunday night, we decided we were moving to California. And, and I'm not going to sit up here and be all brave and say that the next few days weren't difficult for me, but as soon as I got over myself, I put my head down, and we started, we started moving towards this goal. And let me tell you something. I've never seen God move in my life like this before. I'm not going to teach a prosperity gospel to you tonight, but these things actually happened to me. I mean, we had everything sold in like three and a half weeks. The only thing that hadn't come together for us was a job for myself. I had interviewed for a job in Sacramento, and I flew back, and I didn't hear anything for weeks. And I remember I was driving to work. We had to move out of our house in two days. I was driving to work, and it's totally against my nature to leave without knowing where I'm going to go to work. You know what I mean? And I was just praying out loud in my car on the way to work, and I was like, God, you don't have to test me. I'm going. 
Two hours later, I got a call from California. I got the job. We moved to California. The rest is history. So, I mean, let me, let me tell you this. If you do make a decision like this, you know, here's a spoiler alert for you. Not everybody's going to understand, okay? You know, I always joke with my wife saying, maybe we should have said we were moving for money. I got this great job, you know, CEO. Because I'm telling you, people would have been more understanding a lot on, on my side of things. But people aren't going to understand. So I just want to close. I want to say three things to, to the visiting men, especially in the room tonight. Um, I want to say three things. The first thing I want to say is this. The churches in this movement are the tip of the spear for the Lord in our day. Okay? I mean, we're looking for men of action at Verity Baptist Church. So if you're running, if you're sprinting, if you're taking names in your secular life, why aren't you doing it for the Lord? So that's the first point. Okay? The second thing is, we're given a lot of secular definitions of courage today. You know, anybody that wears a uniform, cops, soldiers, firemen, whatever, I reject it all. Okay? Standing on the Word of God when it's not popular to do so, that is courage, my friends. So that's the example that we need for ourselves, and especially for our boys who are going to be the next generation of pastors. Okay? Final point. Your decision making, whether you like it or not, will shape future generations. Okay? So your, your wife, men, and your kids are coming with you, whether you make bad decisions or good decisions. Okay? So they can't make that decision. Your wife can't decide what to do. Your children can't decide what to do. Okay? So if this message resonates with you tonight, grab the wheel with both hands and turn the ship, because only you can do it. Okay? Thank you.